Good, thank you, Tobias. Uh, so the voluntary markets, of course, have been around for quite some time. On the right, uh, left hand side, you see uh, the so-called uh, verified carbon standard, the dark blue curve, and uh, the so-called gold standard, which is the light blue curve. This is denominated in million ton of CO2 equivalent issued credits on these markets. So you remember the compliance system EU ETS had a cap of 2 billion per year. Here we talk about 40, 50 million, and this is global level. So you see the voluntary market internationally is much, much smaller than the compliance market, but it has increased particularly over the last years. Unfortunately, we don't have any number for 2019 because there's no agency collecting these numbers. There are some voluntary uh, yeah, data uh, collectors, but uh, they were unable to do a report on last year yet. All the anecdotal evidence shows that the last year volume has been significantly higher. So I would not be surprised if it goes around 100 million tons. Uh, one can say there are various factors that have led to this increase in the voluntary market. Of course, the social movement Friday for Future, Greta Thunberg, has pushed a lot of pressure on companies, especially in Europe. Uh, so is it now a lot of large oil companies they have engaged in carbon neutrality, meaning not only carbon neutrality of their production process, but also their product sales. So this means you can now buy carbon neutral petrol at petrol pumps in various European companies, uh, countries, sorry. And the credits that are used for this mainly come through what is now uh, increasingly called nature-based solution. So that means credits from forestry projects. What I also should say is there is a big trend that large multinational industrial companies uh, set up carbon neutrality targets for years ranging from 2030 to 2050. So one sees that this voluntary market is now becoming uh, significant. Of course, there has been a chill now due to the COVID crisis. Um, I know that a number of uh, credit providers have had uh, reductions in assignments and uh, credit sales over the past six months. But I also would like to note that still a number of new companies publish these carbon neutrality targets. So I would say that the voluntary market should be relatively robust with regard to the COVID crisis. Um, as, as I mentioned, there are various standards in the voluntary market. Uh, so the so-called verified carbon standard, which is overseen by an entity called VERA. There are also then forestry specific standards like Plan Vivo. Um, and there are then so-called premium labels, for example, what is called Climate Community Biodiversity Alliance, or I mentioned the gold standard already. But overall, if you, for example, also go to the US, you will find a lot of other standard uh, providers. So one can say there is about two dozen uh, actors and standard providers in the voluntary market, which makes it a bit difficult to understand because each standard has its own rules. And so one needs to be fully aware about what are the differences in these standards. Uh, here I give an overview of the verified carbon standard because it's the largest uh, voluntary market standard that exists. So it's based in the United States. It has its registry, which was just launched uh, now in uh, spring. Um, there are uh, 1600 projects that have been registered around the world to give credits uh, for the voluntary market. Um, yeah, what one should, of course, say it is a private sector entity, so it doesn't is not subject to any government regulation. Uh, I mentioned the gold standard. It's based in Switzerland. It was set up by a coalition of NGOs uh, who thought that the clean development mechanism under UN Framework Convention on Climate Change is not sufficiently stringent. Uh, it's a foundation, a nonprofit. So 
uh, they have uh, about uh, 1700 projects in more than 80 countries that have undergone gold standard uh, certification. Mm, and now this gold standard is going beyond carbon, that it wants to set up standards also for water and for other sustainable development benefits. Uh, so it's quite an innovative uh, entity. So here you see the shares of the various standards in the international voluntary market. Uh, these are numbers for 2018. As I mentioned, unfortunately for last year, they are not available. So you see here um, the verified carbon standard, uh, the biggest column on the left hand side, then you see gold standard, then you see combination, for example, uh, verified carbon standard plus uh, CCB on the forestry sector. Uh, then you see on the voluntary market also some people buy and sell CDM credits um, because the CDM is not limited to the compliance market. And then you see further smaller players, but you see uh, the market is relatively concentrated. What is also important is to see the price differential. Um, so here the big players have relatively low prices some of the niche players have higher prices but one needs to say that some of course of these niches are then related also to specific national circumstances uh, yeah so this shows there is no not one voluntary market there are many parts of the voluntary market and they have very different characteristics and that of course means one can learn from these various aspects, but uh, overall one needs to say that it's, uh, yeah, the voluntary market so far has not been able to reach volumes that are comparable to the compliance market. And that also it is um, very important to understand that even the biggest players in the voluntary market have had issues with regard to the demand. Because for example, gold standard, one knows that the price for gold standard credits is relatively high, but at least until last year, the demand was not sufficient to actually really generate uh, acquisition of all the credits that were there available on the market. So all the voluntary markets always fight with the question, yeah, how do we get sufficient demand for our market? Um, here I just give the cycle of the how the voluntary markets work. So usually you develop first the documentation of a project that generate emission reduction credits. And at this phase, you may not yet have decided on which of the segments of the voluntary market you want to get with your project. Then you implement your project. Of course, at that time, you need to know which standard you want to use because you need to do the verification. Once the project is up and running, you regularly will want to get the offset credits, uh, having them issued, um, get them into a registry, and then you can trade them. And of course, somebody needs to cancel them. That usually would be the company, for example, who wants to be carbon neutral. Here, I just uh, give the comparison between the CDM, which is of course a yeah, internationally backed system with uh, overview of rules. So again, project idea, design document, approval by the host and investor country, the validation, meaning that the, the documents are subject uh, to the rules and are consistent with the rules. Then formal registration by the executive board, monitoring of the project actually achieving the reductions, having the reductions verified and certified, and then the issuance of the certified emission reductions credits. So generally, the voluntary market operates according to a similar fashion. Here on the right hand side, we just have uh, the process again, project idea note, design document, validation, verification, issuance. Then the project developer wants to give it to a broker or maybe try to sell directly. And then there will be the entities who want to use the units. Yeah, so with that, I would like to end my presentation.